new dark color, color scheme, code inside for struct and rail scopes, improved refactorings, and new test gutters. Hi everyone, my name is Artyom, and in this video I'm gonna show you what's new in RubyMine 2018.3. If you use the dark color, color scheme, the first thing you will notice in RubyMine 2018.3 is that now this scheme looks completely different. We reworked colors for the most of the Ruby and Rails elements to make dark color less noisy and easier on the eye. We hope you will love the new dark color, and we encourage you to give it a try. However, if you want to instantly roll back to the previous version, just go to Preferences or Settings, choose Editor, Color Scheme, Ruby, make sure that dark color is currently chosen, click on the gear icon, choose Import Scheme, and click on the Transform Current Scheme to Dark Color 2018.2. Then you can click Apply, OK, and you will see the Dark Color will look exactly like it did in RubyMind 2018.2 or older. RubyMind 2018.3 improves code autocompletion and navigation for rail scopes. For example, when you add an association object to your scope, RubyMind properly suggests finder methods from Active Record. The ID now also properly detects scopes in chained calls, provides autocompletion for them, and allows you to quickly navigate to their definitions. The ID also adds full support for struct. This includes code autocompletion, navigation, and finding usages. You can now also quickly rename struct objects in their attributes like this. RubyMind 2018.3 allows you to quickly iotinize strings and translate them to multiple locales at once. To do that, choose a string, press Alt-Enter to access intention actions, and click on the iotinize hard-coded string. In the open dialog, you can create a new key and provide a translation for every existing dictionary. Now you can Command-click on the newly created key and navigate to every existing dictionary and back. The new version of RubyMine also allows you to create translations for lazy lookup and namespaced keys. The same logic applies here. Press Alt-Enter and hit Create Property. RubyMine will create a key name based on the file location and a lazy lookup or based on a scope that you edit. So again, just add a translation for all the locales and hit OK. Now if you navigate to any locale, you will discover the nested key and its translation. RubyMine also allows you to see a translation preview instead of an I to N key. Put a caret at a key and press command dot or control dot depending on your operating system. With the new version, you can even change the translation preview to any existing locale. Press Alt-Enter, change preview locale, and choose which dictionary should be used for a preview. In the new version, we also fixed issues in some refactoring options and added new things to others. For example, you can now extract substrings to variables and constants. To do that, choose a part of any string, open the refactory this pop-up, and choose Extract Variable. Or you can use a direct shortcut for that action. Click Enter, provide a new name for your variable or constant, and it's done. You will also discover the updated Extract Parameter dialog. Now when you extract a parameter, you can not only provide its name, but also specify its type. So you can make your parameter optional, pass it as a block, as an array for variable arguments, or provide a default value for it like this. Finally, RubyMind 2018.3 adds handy test gutters, which allow you to run any particular test faster. So if you click on the gutter at any test, from here you can run it, debug it, or run it with coverage. Note that a gutter icon changes when your test fails. 
It will change again as soon as you fix your test and rerun it. Visit jetbrains.com slash ruby slash what's new to learn more about all these new features and also see improvements made for Git, JavaScript, Markdown, and user interface. Thank you for watching.